Hi there, I hope you're doing well. Today, we've got another sketchbook session. Valentine's Day is coming up, so we're gonna be doing a sketchbook session themed around Valentine's. Grab your art supplies and let's create. Considering I didn't have a clear idea in mind at all for this sketchbook session, I think it might be my favourite spread yet. I'm reaching for my collage supplies because that's something I've been really enjoying lately. I got most of these from the haul that I did recently. It was an absolutely huge haul, which I'll leave down below if you missed it. I'm picking out cute pieces of paper, anything floral, anything pink. And I'll also be using washies for this spread. Today I decided to reach for my Cardi Fat Book. It's a lovely sized square sketchbook and it's 100% cotton. I decided to reach for this one because I wanted to work on a slightly bigger scale. The other sketchbook that I'm using is the A5 Stillman and Burn. And especially because I'm planning to use Neo colours for this spread, I just wanted to give myself more room to work with. The Neo Colour Pastels are lovely to use, but they're a little bit stubby now. It's quite difficult to add details, so working a little bit bigger I think will help with that. My partner also got me some scrapbooking supplies for Christmas, and one pack that he got me was this gorgeous vintage rose paper. It's dark, it's got pink in it, and I think it's going to look so good. It's perfect for the Valentine's theme. And because it's dark, I can add light or bright colours, and the contrast is there. I also love these bright pink floral strips. It was actually a tag from an item of clothing that I got, and I just cut it into strips so it looks like washi, but it really fits the theme. There's a combination of papers that have been cut up, and a few stickers as well. But the theme that we're going for is all things love. I didn't want it to seem really cliched though, like the kind of things that you get on Valentine's Day cards in shops. I didn't want it to be anything that was kind of cringy. Originally, I also wasn't planning to use watercolour for this spread, but because I'm using literally 100% cotton watercolour paper, it just seems perfect. Of course I should use it. I had Neo colours in mind for one specific reason, which you'll find out a little bit later on. And I love how bright the Neo colours can go. It's so easy to get pigment down. It's so much easier than colour pencil. You don't need to work very hard at all. And I love how quick and easy the Neo colours are. I got the water soluble pack, but I don't tend to add water to them generally. So one of the first things that I thought of was Cupid. I knew I wanted to attempt to paint a little cupid. I do think one of the hardest parts of this spread was to make it look cute and to do it well and not make it look cringy. As soon as I started painting cupid I kind of remembered how warped the paper goes. I really love this paper. It's 100% cotton but it's only something like 90 gsm so it does tend to warp but it does kind of flatten itself later on so you kind of need to accept it for the first layer and then it will get less warped as time goes on but it definitely looks very warped on the paper through the camera. I do like to use Pinterest for inspiration because you can type something in and it will give you any vague ideas that go with that. On Google if you type in Cupid you're only gonna get Cupid. Whereas on Pinterest there's so many different types you can have art, you can have people, you can have anything. And it could be like a vintage style, it could be more modern. It really is a fantastic source of inspiration. And I don't know if it shows, but the style of Cupid that I've gone for is kind of renaissance. Though I had always planned for the wings to be bright. Another thing I felt like a Valentine's Day sketchbook spread needs is a couple. So we've got a couple in the corner here. I don't think the anatomy's spot on, I'm just gonna say. It was a bit of a weird angle because in the reference photo that I'm using, the girl is kind of sat on the boy's lap. So the perspective is a little bit odd and the clothes have so many folds in, the clothes are a little bit odd as well. So I really simplified it. And then in the center, one thing that I knew that I wanted was a slightly abstract looking piece with a heart and flowers coming out and the words he loves me he loves me not around the outside because that's one of the things that i do associate with valentine's day i mean valentine's day is it's love and it's sweet and it's romantic 
but a lot of the time it's also not. Sometimes people are single or in love with someone that doesn't love them back or they're not being treated right. And sometimes there's a lot of stress around events that are supposed to be romantic. Me and my partner don't tend to celebrate Valentine's Day. We might do something nice, but we don't buy cards or presents. Sometimes it's just unnecessary pressure. So as much as Valentine's Day is about love, it doesn't always go to plan. I'm using watercolour as a base because I knew I wanted to go over in neo colours, but I wasn't completely sure how much neo colour I was going to put over. And sometimes I like adding watercolour just to be able to see what I'm looking at a little bit better. When sketching with pencil, it can be quite hard to visualise what the entire sketchbook spread is going to look like. By loosely going over in watercolour you can kind of visualise it a little bit more and it also helps you decide just how much you want to go over in a different medium in colour pencil or pastel or whether you're happy with it just being a really light layer of watercolour. Since I had a load of pink on my brush I also decided to add a load of patterns around the entire spread. These are kind of supposed to be ribbons but I didn't plan that at all. I completely winged that. I just felt like it needed something around the outside and I didn't want to do loads of heart decorations. I usually do stars, though I feel like the ribbons do work really well here. When it comes to designing a sketchbook spread, it can be really hard to know where to begin. So when I was planning this spread, I kept it really simple. I knew I wanted a slightly abstract neo-colour vase flower heart thing. <laughs> I knew I wanted the words and I felt like I should have a couple. So I decided to just keep it as those three main components. The mixed media aspects, I feel like really tie this together. In previous sketchbook sessions, I have attempted to do too much. I think sometimes with sketchbook sessions, it can be hard to know where to begin and how to fill the pages. With the Arthur Christmas spread that I did, I chose three main characters that I was going to do. But because it was a smaller sketchbook, there wasn't enough room to add anything else to really tie the piece together. And I tried to add some washi, but it just didn't really work. And then things like the winter spread that I did recently, I think that one worked well, but I tried to do too much. There were too many small painted components. So this time around, I just decided to focus on the really big ones, but leave enough space for me to just have fun and fill the gaps. And I feel like this was the best way to do it. I think the Barbie one worked well, but again, I didn't really leave myself much space to add the decoration. And that's something to bear in mind. If you want to make a really pretty sketchbook spread, you kind of need to have enough space to do everything that you want to in it. And if you're working too small, you can just about fit the good paintings that you want in. But if you don't have the space for the decoration or collaging or washi tape, it's just not going to tie the entire piece together. I love the way that this spread is cohesive. Because I started with the main collage elements, the black ripped paper is diagonal across the spread and the floral elements are spaced really nice and evenly around the outside. The composition of this spread is my best yet. And it's something I'm going to aim for in future sessions. It was at about this point that I was struggling to visualise the entire spread, so I decided to just grab the neo colours out whilst the watercolour was still drying. For the words, he loves me, he loves me not, I knew that I wanted to do it as kind of like a childlike handwriting. So it's capitals, but it's kind of messy. It's the kind of handwriting of a teenager writing it when they're slightly angry, frustrated. And to be honest, I couldn't imagine writing it in any other way. If it wasn't capitals and it was just lovely flowy handwriting, I just don't think it would have worked for this theme. I had originally planned to just use pastels for the heart and the flowers, but honestly I think the watercolours were just looking so pretty at this point and they were such a lovely shade of pink that I decided to just do neocolour accents. So I went around each of the edges and I just tried to refine some details. For the winter session that I did on the page previous, I used neo colours in the centre to do a mug and I used it completely. So for this one I decided to keep it mostly watercolour to make it look a little bit different from the previous one. And also because the pastels have such a unique texture that isn't as noticeable if you fill the entire page with them. And I really wanted the words to stand out. I mean they're black, they're pastel. 
I really wanted them to be the central point of this entire spread. Because my pastels aren't brand new anymore though, they are getting a little bit stubby and I'm finding them a little bit hard to use. I knew that this was inevitable because Crayolas are the same and that's just kind of what pastels are like. Unfortunately, they didn't have a sharp enough point for me to be able to use the pastels for the people. So I had to go in with colour pencil to just refine those details. I'm honestly already finding the pastels a little bit harder to use now that they don't have a sharp point anymore and I do miss that. Something I have been doing lately that I haven't really mentioned too much in my videos is I switched to colour pencils to refine the lines, especially in portraits. And then I kind of go back to watercolour. I don't know if that's a common thing, it's just something that I found easy at the moment. It's a really good way to be able to refine the lines, but then continue what you're doing, if that makes any sense. It means I get to add all of the facial features in, just check that they're in the right place, remind myself where they're supposed to be, and then I can go back with watercolour to make it look cohesive and the pencil lines will stay there but I can cover them up a little bit if I wanted to. I can make the piece more vibrant. I think it's a really cool technique. It was about this point that I decided there wasn't enough decoration. Now that we've filled in the main components we can see what the spread is looking like and what needs to be added. I like that I gave myself enough room by adding the collage but there's still room for decoration there's always more room for decoration i didn't end up doing too much to cupid i thought i would just keep it really loose instead i wanted the spread to be cohesive and i wanted it to be so that your eyes glance over everything over the page rather than only being drawn to one thing. I think the words do really stand out and the flowers are very central so that's probably where your eyes end up going. It's still a very loose spread with flowy watercolour, pastels, not too much detail and I think that's why it works. I don't know, that's just what I'm thinking but let me know down below what your thoughts are on this spread. It's just a fun little pink floral sketchbook session and I think it's cute. This washi is from the huge box that I got in my recent and haul, as well as the cute little butterfly stickers, which really tie the entire spread together. They are a little bit more purple than pink, but because they have bits of black in them, I think they match the darker paper really well. I also just kind of went ham at this point and chose anything that could fit the theme. Anything pink, anything purple, anything that's got hearts on, or flowers, anything that's kind of cute. An idea that I had recently, and please let me know if you're at all interested in this, is to turn my sketchbook pages into prints. I'm not sure if this one will work because it's so wide, but especially my Barbie sketchbook session, I feel like I could potentially turn that into a print if anyone would be interested in seeing that. Please let me know and I'll try my best to edit that and get it on the imprint store. I love the postage stamps that I got and I also found these heart candle stickers which I just thought were absolutely perfect for this theme. I don't know when else I would use them, so I decided to just use them now. And I actually have some myself. I think I got them as a gift a while ago from Ikea, but I do actually have some white heart candles that look identical to those. I've also been loving these little circle stickers that I got recently. They're kind of like translucent washi tape, but with lots of different colours. They're kind of pastel, and they're in the shape of a circle. They are perfect for decoration, so I use them quite a lot for this spread. I hope you've enjoyed this fun little sketchbook session. This one was quite different, we're using a lot of mixed media here. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit more variety with that. If you have, please leave a like and consider subscribing, it really helps my channel. I have been struggling a little bit with growth on my channel, so any support that you could give is truly appreciated. I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day, whether you celebrate or don't. Relax and take care of yourself. And I'll see you on Sunday for another art vlog. Bye-bye.